creations. If you're new to my channel and stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by and welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube will notify you every time I'm uploading a new video. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I'm so excited about this DIY because I am bringing to you a DIY using these new wood stems that the Dollar Tree just recently started carrying. My word, do I have so many DIYs that are just running through my head as to what I can do with these wood stems. I can hardly wait to bring them to you. Today's DIY using these wood stems is inspired by a piece that I actually saw at Kirkland's. It's kind of a decor store. I don't know if many of you have them around. I think it's a branch off of Costco. I think Costco actually owns it, but they have some amazing decor in this store. And it's not the most budget friendly store. And I do from time to time like to go walk through there and get inspiration for pieces that I would like to do here at home that I could maybe recreate for you guys and so that is kind of where this piece came from it is a recreation of a piece that I saw at Kirkland's when I saw it I knew that I could recreate it using these wood stems from the Dollar Tree and these wood stems were just perfect for it so let's not waste any more time let me show you what I recreated from Kirkland's using these wood stems for this DIY I'll be using three bags of the new birch wood stems that the Dollar Tree is carrying some raffia, and I'll also be using some Waverly chalk paint in the colors of truffle, ivory, maize, and rhubarb. Just a bit of a fun hack, I like to pick up these chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. It's a two pack for a dollar. These are great for crafting on, for hot gluing, for painting, because you don't want to ruin the surface of your table. And you know when you're hot gluing, you get those glue splatters on there and they're hard to get up. This is perfect for it. It peels off easily. You can clean off the paint easily. And if you have to throw them away, it's only a dollar. Dollar Tree is carrying two different bags of these birch wood wood stems. They've got these shorter, fatter stems, and then they've got these longer, thinner stems. For this DIY, I'll be using the shorter, fatter ones. And I picked up three bags of these. You're going to start off by taking eight of the wood stems and you're going to hot glue seven of the stems around one that will be in the center. For your center stem, you want to try and pick a stem that's a bit on the wider, fatter side. And the ones for the outside, you want them to be a bit thinner and smaller because I feel like they fit together better because we're making a wood flower. I was able to make nine flowers from the three bags of stems that I had, and that's what we need for this DIY. Now don't be put off by some of the stems that may be misshaped. I put those in the center, and it really does add to the character of this DIY, and it's gonna give it more of a rustic feel. Once I glued all my stems together side by side to make the flower, I flipped it over and on the back side, I reinforced it with more hot glue and all of the seams just to make it more sturdy and to really hold the stems together a bit better. And again, I made a total of nine flowers. I'm gonna paint all of my flowers with a watered down acrylic paint. And like I said earlier, I'm using Waverly paint because it's what I have on hand. If you have an apple barrel acrylic paint or a folk art acrylic paint, you can use that too. And you're just really gonna wanna add some water to it and just water it down. I tried using a water paint and it just wasn't showing up on the wood. And so that's why I decided just to water down my acrylic paint because I didn't want the colors to be super bright. I wanted that watered down look because it just gives it an aged rustic look. And so I've chosen to do three flowers in each color. I initially was only gonna use two colors and leave one flower, the raw wood. Didn't much like it. One of the flowers I had ended up doing pink, didn't like that either. And so I kind of am taking you 
on this DIY through the process of me actually making some choices that I didn't much like and changing them. That really is the real process behind a lot of these DIYs. It's kind of a trial and error type thing. A lot of times I'll do something and I just don't like it or I'm not feeling it, so I'll undo it and redo it till I like it. And really all you see is the finished product. You don't really see some of the mistakes that I've made. And in this DIY, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take you all along with me and you can see the process that I really go through when doing these DIYs. Cause sometimes it's really not just cut and dry and it comes out perfectly. There are times that that happens, but a lot of times I just don't feel it. And I do it and do it until I get the product and the finished product, I guess, that I'm happy with, that I can bring to you all. So with this flower, I initially went with a pink because I thought that the spring colors were gonna go nice together. And so I used the watered down pink and as I was doing it, I knew straight away I did not like this and I continued going with it because I wanted to see the full flower in pink. I am loving the yellow and the rhubarb, but this pink, absolutely hate it, doesn't go, isn't going the way that I want it to go, the look that I'm going for. So I took a piece of sandpaper and off the sanding I went each of the petals to get as much of the paint off as I could so I could change the color. A lot of times when I'm doing these projects, you know, I have a vision in my head of what I want it to look like. And once I start doing it and I see it, I'm just like, oh, good golly, this is not going the way I want it to go. I don't like this color. This isn't the look that I'm going for. And so sometimes I'm doing what I'm doing right here and redoing it. And so for this flower, I definitely decided that I was gonna go along the cream line because I wanted something subtle. I wanted something to look a bit rustic and farmhouse and there just wasn't another color that was gonna go with the yellow and rhubarb as well as an off-white or cream wood. For the center of my flowers, I wanted to go with a brown, so I'll be using this Truffle by Waverly. And I watered this down as well. I just feel like the center of the flower making it brown, again, is giving it that rustic farmhouse feel, that aged, distressed look. Okay, I am super happy with the colors now. They work well together. I did three flowers in each color and I will tell you that I had some of the stems that were a bit bigger than the others. I set those aside and just decided to make one flower out of them and so that's the flower that I'm just going to kind of set off to the side. I'm not real worried about it. I think that it's just going to add more character to this wreath. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hot glue all of my flowers together side by side. And when you do this, you wanna kinda offset your flowers so one of the petals is going in between two of the petals of the flower next to it. And this is what's gonna hold this together initially. Now I'm gonna take some popsicle sticks and on the back side of this wreath, I'm gonna hot glue these just to kind of reinforce this a bit, to make it a bit more sturdy, to hold the flowers together side by side, and really to help this wreath keep its shape. And so I'm just gonna hot glue several of these all the way around the back side of this wreath. The popsicle sticks work perfect because now I can easily flip this over and it is very sturdy. It's not as flimsy as it was before I put the popsicle sticks on. I want to add a raffia bow to the front of this, but we all know that raffia is a bit unruly and it's hard to work with because when you unwrap it, it really tends to stay all bent and crinkled up and it's just a bit hard to work with. Just a little trick and tip, if you take your raffia and you submerge it in water and get it good and wet, it goes from this easily to this straight raffia here. 
It is so easy to work with once you've wet it, and I really love the look of raffia, but I know in the past, before I figured out if I just wet it, I really didn't like working with it because when I did do a bow, the bow didn't come out as pretty as I wanted it to be. And so raffia dries pretty quickly. So just like I said, submerge it in water, get it good and wet, and it is easy to work with and you get that beautiful look that you get with raffia. For this wreath, I'm gonna go with placing the raffia bow off to the side instead of the top of the wreath. To hang this wreath up, I just tied together about three or four pieces of raffia that I'm gonna hot glue to the back of this. I'm not worried about it falling off because hot glue really does stick really well to wood. And so I think if I just put enough hot glue, it's gonna stay just fine. Using these wood stems gives this such a rustic feel. I love the way this turned out. I think that this is such a fun way to use these wood stems. And I gotta say it, this turned out so stinking cute. This is one of those pieces that could very easily be kept up all year round. I love this piece. Again, I know I've been saying this a lot lately, but Dollar Tree has got some really great items in stock that are great for DIYs, and this piece is definitely another one of those pieces that ranks in my top 10 favorites that I've done. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY using the wood stems from the Dollar Tree. Please give this video a thumbs up, and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because those thumbs up, they really do help my channel to grow, and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget, and bye for now, everybody.